Webflow recently announced localization, which unfortunately for us introduces a new layer of complexity when it comes to their already quite confusing pricing. So in this episode, as part of my frequently asked questions series, we're gonna go over the different prices and what they kind of mean, and maybe you can decide then what one is best for you. If you don't know who I am, my name is Samuel Gregory and I've been a website developer for nearly 20 years and producing Webflow content specifically on YouTube for the last three or four years. So with that, I'm here to help you make a purchasing decision on Webflow and whether it's right for you. So diving right in, I'm gonna to go to the workspace plan first because I feel like this is easy to explain top down. Right, we've been transported. I wasn't happy with the uh, quality of the previous one, so we're gonna redo it hopefully I have a lot better. So as I say, a workspace plan is the is your account plan, it encapsulates all of the sites that you will build. Um, and there are two types of plans, you've got in-house teams or you've got freelancers and agencies, and we'll get more into it, but ultimately, given the context of this series, you're more likely to go for an in-house team, whereas freelancers and agencies, the whole point of it is that you are invited to in-house teams whether that's a, a, as an individual or a group of people but we'll go into that in a bit later on you can obviously get billed monthly or yearly given that domain names all refresh on a yearly basis you might as well save the 32 percent and go yearly but smaller projects might demand that you just go for a monthly billing cycle and as you flip that you'll obviously see the prices go go up a little bit Starting with the starter plan, which is the free plan, which is what everyone gets when you first open a, a Webflow account. Uh, it's intended for just one user, but you get unlimited paid for hosted plans. That means you can create websites and attach your own domain, uh, bind a site plan to it, which again, we'll go into later on. You can have unlimited ones of these, but you can only have two Webflow staged websites. What that means, you can publish it, but it's under webflow.io. So it's great for prototypes. It's great for just testing out landing pages and things like that without committing wholeheartedly into buying a domain name and sorting all that out. Uh, really good for the, the that sort of thing, really. Um, I often use uh, state Webflow staging websites for just projects that, yeah, I'm just sort of testing out, but it is limited. You only get two pages, uh, but you do get 50 CMS items. So just good for little hobby websites. You get to invite two agency or freelancer guests and you get two free commenters, which is a new feature whereby people can comment on the website to give you feedback as you work through the design process. Upgrading to $19 per month per seat to the core plan, you can have a maximum of three users. That would be 57 bucks per month uh, if you max out all of those users. And limited pay for uh, hosted websites that you use, obviously you pay for it, you, you have the site plan attached to those, but you can have 10 Webflow staging websites. So that's an increase of two to 10, which give you 150 pages, 50 CMS items, which I think is new. I didn't think you could have CMS items under this account, but hey ho. And then custom code, which is the thing that makes Webflow particularly powerful that you can write your own code. Normally you have to pay for a site plan that has custom code, but if you have a pay for account plan, then you can have custom code on presumably any website that you, you use. Site protection, designer and editor roles. Editor can only edit the content of a website, whereas a designer can actually change the design of a website. You automatically get code export on every single website you create. Two freelancer agency guests and then an increase of 10 free commenters. If you go for the growth plan, which is $49 per month per, per seat, then you can use a maximum of nine users, unlimited sites, uh, pay for sites, and limited staging websites with the same 150, 50 CMS items, custom code, all of the rest of it. But you do get publishing permissions. Presumably this is some people are allowed to publish to staging versus um, live. People, some people can and cannot publish at all. So just a bit more control over that and then the same rules apply there and then with an enterprise plan you obviously have to contact them to get your specific pricing I, I assume you present your use case and then they construct a pricing around the number of users you have and the number of sites you need and various things like that so that's workspace plans for pretty much 90 percent of people um i would say that this is an option here because in real world usage Teams like to launch other little websites here and there, whether they're learning, whether they're teaching staff or training staff. 
Um, it's nice to have the option of more Webflow staging web websites, not necessarily published websites under a unique domain name, but just something they can play around with. I often see this on a lot of on a lot of accounts that I, that I have access to. So then we move on to freelancers and agencies. And like I say, the intention here is for these people to be invited to in-house teams. However, they can operate independently and you can create sites just like you can on the other plans. Uh, they are a bit more limited. They are a bit, little bit more cheaper, but like I say, the idea is that you're being invited to other, other teams. Start a free account, one user, two Webflow uh, staged websites, and then you can have two agency or freelancer guests given access. I'm gonna find out what guests is, I'm gonna put it on the screen because I'm not quite sure what they mean by guest here. And then two free commenters, so just a basic account. Freelancer account, which is the one I use, $16 per month per seat with up to three users. What you kind of have people come and go, so it's not a three is quite a nice little number there. You get 10 staging websites here, full CMS access on all of those staging websites, which is great, um, free guest access, basic roles and permissions, which is design and, and uh, editor. I don't know why they simplify this. I wish they would build it out because I think basically its core is comparable to the freelancer and agency account, but hey-ho, it is what it is. Now, as an agency, if you're growing, you can have up to nine users, but you're paying $35 per month for each of those nine users. But you do get unlimited staging web, um, webflow.io domains, full CMS access, and the whole shebang here. So that's your account plans. Um, like I say, given the context of this series, you'll probably look to, to do this. You might even be able to get away with free plans, and then a lot of this stuff you gain access to under the site plan, which is what we're about to talk about now. So with each website that you want to publish under a unique domain name, that's yourcompany.com, whatever it is, you're going to need to attach a site plan to that. You can get away with a free one, which is, again, those webflow.io domain names that we spoke about. You only get two pages, 50 CMS items, and 50 uh, form submissions over the lifetime of the website. That doesn't renew every single month. That's really interesting, actually. Um, localization, which is a new feature we'll talk about a little bit later on, and previews, and then a small amount of bandwidth. That is the, 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 the amounts of files that are downloaded from your website, So, which is why we talk a lot about large images. If you have large images on your website and the user is downloading those when they visit your website, you're going to use that bandwidth very, very quickly. So this is a very, very limited, um, it seems more limited actually than what I'd previously seen but that's Webflow. Paying $14 per month for that website under the basic plan, you can, of course, attach your own custom domain. And this is where we start getting into sort of quote unquote professional websites. You only get 150 pages. You do not get any CMS items and you get four, 500 form submissions per month. Probably more suitable to landing pages and sort of very, very small, simple websites, again, because you don't get any CMS items. All the rest of it with an increase on bandwidth and the number of visitors that can actually visit the website. CMS plans, which is most of the time the plan that I work with, just because it gives you those 2,000 CMS items um, and then just a general increase all round. And of course, you can see that they suggest it here, but that's $23 per month for that website build, of course, build yearly. Because once again, you can flip between yearly and monthly. Again, attach that custom domain, which is kind of the whole point. You get a thousand form submissions, you get content editors, you get site search, uh, a, a massive increase in bandwidth and a massive increase in visitors. Like I say, most people are gonna be well suited for the CMS plan. However, if you need that little bit more for $39 per month, you can have 10,000 CMS items, two and a half thousand form submissions, 10 content editors. You get the file form, uh, form file upload. That's a little widget that enables someone to upload files to your, your system. Um, never used it myself. There are other ways to do it. Uh, and then increase in bandwidth and visitors. And then finally, the enterprise solution, you have to contact them and tell them your use case. Now, I will say that I've heard horror stories of tens of thousands of dollars per month for websites. Again, contacting them is probably possible here, but just go under the expectation that you will be paying a lot for this plan. But I think the price fluctuates depending on your use case. 
So there's the, the site plan uh, general, but they do have the e-commerce options. Now you don't need a CMS plan here with a, it's not a bolt on basically. So if you are running a shop, you've got three options here to, to enable that to happen. Long story short, I tend to recommend Shopify in this instance. The price is not very competitive. The maturity of the system isn't, isn't so um, great. Saying that they do offer it and people do use it. So let's take a look at that. Standard e-commerce for $29 per month bill yearly, you get 500 items in your shop. You get 2000 CMS items and there is a 2% that's gone up. It was 1.5 I think when I last recorded this, this video. 2% transaction fee for every transaction that's gonna happen, Webflow gonna charge you 2%. But this basically is the CMS plan equivalent. So take a look at the CMS plan and you can, you can see what other stuff it has on there. If you're a slightly bigger shop, you're gonna go for plus at $74 per month. You get 5,000 items in your shop, 10,000 CMS items, and then it removes that transaction fee. So with a bit of maths, you could probably work out which one is worth going at one, what point you're, you're, you should just upgrade to plus to remove that transaction fee. Um, and then this is the business equivalent of that. Advanced $212 a month Build yearly, you get 15,000 e-commerce items, 10,000 uh, CMS items, there's no increase there. Um, basically, I think this, well, yeah, this is just an increase in the e-commerce items. So a lot of money um, for that. So I'll leave that decision up to you. And the final one I wanna talk about is localization. Now this is a bolt-on, and if we go to compare plans here, this is something that's in addition to your website. And I made another episode on a deep dive on this, but I'll give you the TLDR of this, my thoughts on this. Ultimately, I think given that it's $9 per month um, for presumably any size website, this is a separate website that is um, a localization, a different language to your primary website, for an extra nine bucks per month for an entirely, uh, basically a duplicate of your existing website isn't, isn't so much, um, but you need to work this out yourself. There are limitations on this $9 per month. You can add only three languages to that website. Uh, you get the translation, which is really great. Um, and again, you should watch my other episode on that. Uh, CMS localization, which is really great too. And static page localization, basically you get to translate all of your pages. I think they're just bulking out here. Um, and localized SEO, that's the meta information per page. You'll notice what you don't get is styling and image updates per localization. The biggest criticism I've seen online about this is that, that let's say for example, Arabic, which is right to left language. You can't write to left that language uh, because you can't change the style depending on the, the languages, which is just wild. I've not come into contact with that. I've just seen a few comments floating around on YouTube. Maybe it's a, maybe it's an assumption at this point, but you don't. This doesn't enable the, the nine dollars per month doesn't enable you to change the style, colors, all the rest of it based on that language. So once again, twenty nine dollars per per locale, so per language, and you can only have five of those. Get all the translation stuff, and then once again, you get the asset localization and localized URL. Presumably, this is um, okay. So you can you can just change the the name of the slug rather than just let it be the language. Um, and then automatic visit routing. This seems re a real big deal. So if someone goes to your website, you know they're in France, and you've got an English website you have to provide the mechanism to get them to that French website, which uh, you know a lot of websites do actually utilize. Whereas to automatically route them based on their location, it's a big deal. So you're paying $29, an extra $20 for the ability to do some very basic things. And then of course they um, offer the enterprise solution which you can contact them. So let's take a look at this because again, the last time I recorded this video, they were only offering the $9. So let's just have a look at that. Um, custom number of locales, so I've got, that sounds like they'll just increase the price depending on the number of um, translations you have or um, websites that you have. Again, all the same sort of stuff here. Style localization. It's interesting that they don't say style localization here, so maybe it is just 
asset localization under advance that you need enterprise to do custom style, which again, if you're offering an Arabic website. Anyway, let's try and remain impartial. Um, element visibility, same thing as style um, and enterprise scale. So, you know, you get a lot of stuff, but I'm, I just don't know how much this is going to cost as with all the enterprise solutions. So it's a cool feature, very welcome feature, but I do think it's slightly outpricing people potentially. And the incentive to upgrade is to, you know, it's, it's not, these should, I think these should be offered across the board anyway. Just a quick one on services like Airtable that people use to bypass the CMS limit on Webflow. I don't wanna to get too technical, but ultimately this is not a great thing for SEO. It's great if you're building an application and you don't have to rely on SEO because long story short, Webflow needs to make a call to Airtable and then collect the CMS data and then bring it back onto the website after the page loads. So the page is empty when the user first lands on it, which um, isn't great as you can imagine. So there are ways to bypass the CMS limit, but it's case by case basis. If you're a marketing website that needs to, uh, leans on SEO, requires SEO, then you can't look at Airtable as an alternative to the CMS plans. So there we go. I hope this was helpful in helping you sort of break down the different prices. If you have any questions, then leave a comment for me down below or go to flowstate.dev or jupiterthedraft.com and you can ask me a question there and I'd be happy to help you out. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next one.